I had been ministering on faith and I came across the fact that there are dimensions in faith and um, you might need to share this video right now. I, I need you, I need every woman on this page to share this video, to tag somebody into this video today. If, if you say that I'm your spiritual mother or whatever, I there's some things that I need to share with you and I need you to tag in every girlfriend that you got, everybody that you know that is your friend and you deem them to be your true friend. Um, the men would be uh, interested in uh, what I have to say from a different perspective, but God has given me to minister on the dimensions of faith. And uh, I came across something um, that really struck me different in a very different way as it relates to this dimension of faith. And I'm going to, I'm, I'm setting myself to go to Facebook so that I can see who I'm talking to today and just kind of keep up with you as I'm on myself. Um, and we started out on, on Thursday talking about by faith and looking at the different dimensions of faith and understanding it just like there are dimensions in the spirit there are dimensions of faith and so we have to be able to determine which dimension am I in because a lot of people may think that they're operating in one dimension of faith and that could possibly be the reason why you're not seeing what you desire to see as a result of faith because you are in the wrong dimension. Um, we started out talking about by faith um, and now faith and really bringing clarity to what all of that meant. And it meant this, that we became assured on Thursday who would be doing the work, how the work would be done, and literally what is faith. And we understood that to mean that faith is not my feelings. And I think we got that. And so with that understanding, since we know what faith is and we know how our situations that we are praying for, they're going to be done. Now we have to move into the next dimensions to properly understand where we are as it relates to this faith. As, we, as it relates to this faith, where am I? Um, as I begin to um, look at that, I begin to be led of the Lord and I try to go to that next place in which I didn't realize after until after I got back to the hotel the other night that I did actually tap into where God was taking me. And um, if you were at the conference, especially the second night, um, when I tell you that my spirit have not left Ebony Ham's conference. It's like something jumped on me in a heavy way and the Lord just have not turned it loose. And he began to show me that if we're not really, really careful, we will begin to be put in a position where it's almost like we're backpedaling and trying to forward pedal at the same time. The only way I can think of, of it is when you're in a rowboat and you got two, two paddles and you paddling one forward and paddling one backwards, that, that would breed nothing but confusion. And how 
we don't realize that every area of our lives as it relates to our faith, our belief system, every area of our lives count. It counts. And so he said to me, now I want you to go to the next level. And even though I'm not doing them in chronological order, because in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, um, they are somewhat scattered, but I believe that the Lord um, has given me the order in which I'm to go in as it relates to this. And let's go to the 11th chapter in, in um, the 11th chapter and the 24th verse. The 11th chapter and the 24th verse, I believe that's where we're going. Um, and before I read that, I want to, I want to read, uh, 11 and eight said urged on, we're talking about urged faith now. What is, what is, what is urged faith now? And we have to, we have to get clarity on what is urge and urge is, um, earnestly or persistently to persuade someone to do something. And so when we look at urge faith, it said, urged on by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. And he went, although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. Prompted by faith, he dwelt as a temporary resident in the land which was designated in the promise of God. Though he was like a stranger in a strange country, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs with him of the same promise. So, the scripture is telling us that urged on by faith, we're called. We're called. And I don't know about anybody else, but I honestly believe that the people that are on this page, people that come to this page, you're called. And so when I am in urged faith, that's, that's a dimension. When I am in the dimension of urged on by faith, by faith, meaning that faith has caused me to be able to do this. When I am urged on by faith, I'm obedient to what I'm being called to. And because I'm obedient to what I'm being called to, then I take on the full responsibility of that call. And so in the midst of that, I understand now that I'm no longer like everybody else. I'm different. Because I'm not the person that just went. There's a difference between a person that went and a person that was called. There's a huge difference. And I think in this hour, we're seeing the difference. We're being able to, to look at the difference. Some of it is the difference and some of it is um, a lack of understanding. A lack of understanding. He said, being called, being urged on by faith, I was called, not knowing where I was going, but I was given instructions that I was to go and leave the place where I was, and I went. And then he said that me understanding that I am a stranger in the place that I'm in, and that this is a part of the promise. Follow what I'm saying to you. In looking at our society, I guess I'm overwhelmed right now. And, 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 and not so much as, because let me tell you something. I, I, I really believe when God give me a word, I trust the Lord. I trust him wholeheartedly with 
with, with, with what he says. And I have, I have confidence in God and I have confidence in his word. And so when God gave me a word on um, November the 9th about the election, I don't shake at what I see because I know God is in control. And so I'm not, you know, overwhelmed about the workings and the doings because I know who is the God of all of that. I know <laughs> that the hand of the Lord is in it and that even being in a strange place in America, it's a part of the promise. And it says it's temporary. So I live by the word. And some of us, we read the word like it's something that is, you know, um, a fairy tale. But for me, the word is prophecy. And when I read it, I believe it because I've seen the manifestation of its truth. When you know you are in a strange land and you know you are called to keep the commandments of the Lord, my, 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 my heart begins to ache. And it began to ache because I understand, and, and, and please don't get me wrong, I understand the whole, the whole concept of, you know, church is not what it used to be. I, I get that. I get that. I, I, I get that we are in a different time. I get that. I get the fact that, you know, Mother Boyd and, 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 and the people of old and Mother Elsie Shaw and... And, and Bishop Ethiel Clemens, I, I, I get that all of these people um, impacted this world and now they're going on to be with the Lord and that this is not really the way we do it, you know, and that things are changing and that we are in the life and the way of the millennials and we are in the change and, you know, and, and, and everything is, you know, you just... You know, we, 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 we serve in the Lord without religion and we, and we want spirituality and I am number one that is raising the banner for that. But what I don't get is where the church has gone to. What I really don't get is what I'm, what I'm seeing happening as it relates to the body of Christ and just the respect that we're supposed to have as women of God. That part is confusing me. It's confusing me when I, when, I, when I look up and I see people on Sunday mornings doing praise and worship in body con dresses. And dresses, I'm telling you, you may unfriend me after today. You may, you may literally unfriend me after today. And I really don't care. Seeing women do praise and worship in bodycon dresses that is so tight until I can see the dimples in your behind. So tight until I see your thong. I'm, I'm confused about the call of God, the call of God on our lives. The call of God. And instead of us understanding that we are in a strange land and that is a part of the promise and it's a part of the promise because of who we're supposed to be while we're in that land, we are becoming a part of the land. And that's the part that just got me going. That now you can't tell the believers from the unbelievers. Now there is no difference. You can't see the difference, let alone feel the love of God. You can't see the difference. And I guess I'm just not understanding how pastors can allow people to parade in their churches looking like that. I've never seen in this hour so many women that are Christians and you're, you are in service, in the service of the Lord on praise teams, ministering the gospel with your cleavage all the way down here where I can see the crack of your breast. Something is wrong. Who am I talking to? Who am I? Something has gone wrong. 
that there is something in us that says, this is okay. Oh, I know the Bible said that, 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 that you know, we, we come into the body of Christ as babes. And I know, it's, I know we, we, we use the terminology, people, that we ought to come as we are. But why is it that we're coming as we are, but we're staying as we are? At what point does the line get drawn? That skirts are so tight and so short until half of your thighs are out. And you're ministering. And you're standing on put and I can't even I can't even get to the concept of somebody preaching and leading praise and worship with no stockings on. With thongy stringy shoes on and your legs all greased up. What kind of message are you trying to send us? Because to me, that looked like somebody that's got a whole spirit that ain't purged out in God. And any minute you can just go over in a corner to a deacon and just raise your dress up and hit it right there in the corner because you don't even have drawers on. You got on thongs and some greasy legs and a bip bop skirt and you're our praise and worship leader. Y'all, something is wrong. Something is, is absolutely positively wrong with that. And then we wonder why there was so much sexual promiscuity in the body of Christ. We wonder why married men are failing their wives. We're wondering why is there so much cheating. And all of this cheating ain't going on with people that, 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 that work on their jobs. It's going on with people in the church. Because when you come to church, you don't know when, where, and how. And I'm not saying that you got to be like an old fogey woman because I love to look beautiful. But there's a time and a place for it all. And Sunday morning service is not a time for you to show us your nipples in your titties. That's not the time to do it. And I got to give it to you plain talk because you don't understand nothing else. That's not the time. Where is your bra? How are you coming to church on a Sunday morning to worship God and you have no bra on? I, I'm not getting this. I'm not getting this. Jumpsuits on. No underwear on. Okay, so we don't wear girdles no more. But have you ever heard of Spanx? Have you ever heard of something that keeps you from jiggling like that? And then you won't sit down. You're the person that just won't sit down. Because you come to church because you think you're cute. I get so sick and tired of going up and down my Facebook line. And I'm going to tell you right now. When I see pictures like that, I'm going to delete you as my friend. I'm going to block you. People of God. Every time you look around, we are believers. And there's something on you that's got to be naked. For some reason, the women of God in this hour don't want to put on clothes. And I don't know why. What is it? Because we finally got enough money to buy titties? Because we finally got enough money to go and buy an extra behind? And now everything you wear got to be tight, got to be sexy? So now Sex appeal is on an all-time high. Not worship, not brokenness, not Lord, here I am. Not God purge me and cleanse me. God, where is the scripture that says that women ought to dress in modest apparel with shame face? We're not shame anymore. And there's something wrong with the spirit of the Holy Ghost that you say you got when the Holy Ghost in you don't ever say to you, that's too tight. How is it? That you don't think is too tight. When it's so tight in the front. That you can actually see the print of your vagina. Really y'all come on. Come on. I don't even know who I'm talking to today. I don't even know who I'm talking to today. I can't take it no more. And it hurts. It hurts because we're the Christians. It hurts. And we're the Christians and we looking like hoes. I'm sorry. 
We're the Christians. And we up in the pulpit with leather pants on. And some of us ain't got no business having them on, period. And we done went body con crazy. Everything is a body con dress. Are y'all serious? You the women of God and you and you taking pictures with your shoulder all out like this and you and, and you the woman of God? You the woman of God and your your chest is all the way down here on Facebook. I don't care if you ain't in church. Who takes a picture like that? Because you're confusing us. You're confusing us because one minute you want to give us the word of the Lord and one minute you want to tell us what God is saying and one minute you want to prophesy and the next minute we see you taking an all out sex picture and a selfie of yourself and I don't care if you don't want me as your mama no more. I don't care if my spiritual daughters did just disown me and you could, you could unfriend me. You could say whatever you want to say because you know what? I didn't sign up for a hoe as a daughter in the first place. So you won't offend me. You will not offend me. Get on somewhere with that. Because if we don't raise a standard in the body of Christ, then where in the world are we going? I want somebody to answer that. Then what are we training this next generation? What are we training them? Because everything now is about the way you look. It ain't even about praise and worship no more. It's about what you going to look like when you get up there. I'm not. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not old fashioned. I'm, I'm not old fashioned. I'm, I'm not against people looking good. I'm not against anybody being beautiful. Because that's what you got to remember. This is the beautiful generation. The other evangelists and people that came along when I was young, they didn't look like us. So you already gorgeous. So what do you have to prove? You already beautiful. So why does it have to be that enticing? We can't hear nothing that you saying that God say for looking at your shape. And anytime you got on a dress, that when you turn around, I can see the very cup of your butt. The way your butt is shaped. I can see the crease between your tail and your imprint of your dress. Something is wrong with your spirit. Or you didn't have no mirrors when you left home. You don't have, y'all don't have to put no hearts up. You don't have to put no hearts up. You don't have to put no checks up. Somebody said, what does it got to do with faith? Everything. Because the Bible said, <laughs> the Bible said, aroused by faith, Moses, when he had grown to maturity and become great, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. When you are aroused by faith, you refuse to become the next hoe on the street. You refuse for people to look at you. And think you are a slut instead of an evangelist. You refuse for anybody to get your identification mixed up because of the way I look. And I don't care what nobody said. Well, you know what? It, 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 it ain't, it ain't what's, what you wear. It's what's in your heart. What, what's in your heart is testifying. The way you look testifies of what's in your heart. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It does. Out of that same heart, it testifies of your dedication to God. It testifies of the fact that I refuse for anybody to look at me. Because the bottom line of it is, is my testimony should be something that I tell, not what people still see. I just said something right there. And you don't have to tap that screen on me today. I don't need no help today. Say what you want to say. But the line has got to stop. It's got to stop. I'm going places. Walking in churches. I want you to hear what I'm saying. Y'all just got to forgive me today. 
You got to forgive me today. Because we got another generation coming behind us. And I'm seeing the same thing. I'm seeing the same thing. It's almost like history is repeating itself around here. Where's your mothers? Where's your grandmother? Okay, forget about that. Where is your conscience? Where is your Holy Ghost? I, I told somebody the other day, I said, you know, I was ministering the other night, and the reason why I'm really bringing it back up, because I can't, I can't shake it. When I go to dress and I go to the mall to buy a dress at Neiman Marcus, I don't care where I am, Bergdorf Goodman's, and I go in the, I pick a dress off the rack. And I get in that dressing room and I shout and I dance and I fall down the floor until the lady come on and said, ma'am, are you all right? Is everything all right? I heard a big thump. I said, yeah, I'm all right. Because you know what I'm doing in that dressing room? I'm dancing. I'm spinning around. I'm shouting. I'm falling out. And if I can see my tail, somebody else going to see it at church. That's where all the sheets come from. Because we won't have dress pre presentable to even give God proper glory. Somebody got to babysit you because of your outfit and you a grown woman. And you think that's how you're going to find a man? Do you think a real man of God won't you? You really think that? Because if that's what it took to turn him on to you, there's another girl out there that look way better than you. There's another girl out there that's got bigger boobs than you do. There's another girl out there that's got a smaller waist than you do. So if that's what it took to get him, you ain't going to keep it. You ain't going to keep it. Because first of all, he's not looking for a wife then. He's looking for a prostitute. He's looking for somebody that he can get turned on by. Not nobody he can build nothing with. And you got it all wrong. Y'all got it all wrong. It's like I'm looking at all these girls like, what are you trying to prove? Put some clothes on. Where is your self-esteem? Where is your dignity? Where is your self-respect? Do anybody have anything to look at where you're concerned and wonder what it would look like? Or do they just see it all? And we saved. And we filled with the Holy Ghost. I saw a picture of one girl on Facebook that said, I'm getting ready for my date for when my husband come. Titties all the way down to here. I mean, if she probably moved like this, the nipples would have came out. And you saved? And you got the Holy Spirit? I'm seeing women of God taking pictures on Facebook with white beaters on. Are y'all kidding me? I'm done. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I can't. I can't just shut up anymore. Because it's going too far. It's going too far. Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me today. We done gone too far with all this sheer see-through stuff where the whole top of your breast is showing. We're going too far. It's too much. Everything that's on the rack is not meant for a woman of God. All right. So hate me. So just hate me today. Just hate me today. I don't care. It's, I'm still talking about faith. Because the scripture said, being aroused by faith, Moses came to a place that when I become mature, I don't want a past identification. So now we're dealing with a lot of immaturity. So when you go to church this coming Sunday and you see all of that, people that you know been saved for years, people that you know that's been in the body of Christ for years, then you know what's up. You know what's up because I'm telling you what's up. You come in a church look like that? Why? You didn't come to serve God. The other night, Saturday night, 
When I got done ministering, I was getting ready to walk out of the church and the presence of the Lord fell into place. And God sent me all over that building laying hands on people. And they were all on the floor. And God had me to get down there with them. And I was jumping across chairs and ministering to people. When I got in the hallway of the hotel, because I left with my clothes on, and some of my, 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 my assistants walked me in here to my hotel room, I turned around and I said to them, do you think I could have did all of that with a body con dress on? Do you think I could have done all of that with my cleavage all the way down here? No, I could not. You know why? Because we ain't in ministry for the right reason. You not in ministry because you want to serve God. You ain't in ministry. You in ministry because you want to be on a stage. If you want that moment, then take your end to Hollywood. Take your end to Motown. But don't bring that into the body of Christ. Uh, no, we're not going to swallow it anymore. Anybody that's in ministry, you dress like you in ministry. You carry yourself like you in ministry. What you wear says to the Lord, I'm ready at any time for, for you to use me for your glory. And I'm not about to embarrass my husband. I'm not a, about to embarrass my father. I'm not about to embarrass my brother or my sister. Because I have a shame face. There's some things about me I don't want to portray that. Don't get it twisted. I got a shape. You, know, you can ask my, my sisters. And my, I got a shape and a cute one. And yes, I can put on all of that. But if I walked in church with purple hair, I'm talking about me. I didn't say there was nothing wrong with purple hair. That's what you want to do. But if I walked in church with a body con dress on over my knees and 10 inch heels and purple hair, talking about lift your hands up because I got a word from God. Half of y'all would get up and walk out. Do you know why? Because there's an expectation that you have of me to represent the fact that I am a prophet and I am called of God. And because of that, there are certain things that I sacrifice for the kingdom. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing right there. Now, where's all the hearts? Where's all the hearts? I told the people the other day, I wanted to lighten my hair. And all of my life, you know, since I was a little girl, my hair would always turn blonde in the summertime. And I said, well, one day, you know what? It'll be blonde streaks like somebody put bleach in it and blonde it. And I said, you know what? I just want to go back to blonde hair. Okay, put it in my head. Everybody thought it was cute. But I woke up the other morning and the Lord said to me, know who I've called you to. Juanita, I'm not offended by your color, but I want you to tone it down because this is the sacrifice of your call. I can turn this video off right here. How you going to come in the ministry and don't want to sacrifice nothing? I want somebody to tell me that. How you going to come into ministry and there's nothing about you that think about who you're going to birth out that's coming behind you. Y'all ain't never seen me dress like that. And you never will to get up to do nothing. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, let me look because... I don't, I don't, I just, I just want to know who mad today. I want to know who mad. Because if you're mad, something is wrong with you. If you mad, you need to go back and pray again. My God. Huh. Then verse 11, 27 said, motivated by faith. Moses left Egypt. So then, what's wrong with my prayers? What's wrong with my prayers? Urged on by faith, I can't obey God. Urged on by faith, I'm in a strange land, but now I'm becoming a part of that land. Now I'm looking like that land. In every sense of the word, calling myself a woman of God. Somebody said, well, I ain't called to ministry. Absolutely, you are. 
Somebody said, well, maybe she ain't talking to me because I ain't, I ain't calling. Absolutely, you are. Every last woman on this page, you are. And you're supposed to be an example. And there are some things that you're supposed to deny yourself for the sake of your calling. Urged on by faith, I've become a part of that strange land. Aroused by faith, I refuse to grow up and become mature. Because I'm still trying to have my moment. I refuse to walk in maturity. I refuse to grow up. I made up my mind. I'm serious. I don't care who it is. I said when I start strolling down my timeline and I see women, period. That's supposed to be women of God and you looking naked with all of your whole top off. I'm deleting you and blocking you. Because I can look at sluts on the streets every day. But I'm not going to have a timeline of women that's talking about I love God. And I got to keep looking at you like that. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Aroused by faith. I refuse to be associated with Egypt. I refuse to even let you think I am. And finally motivated by faith, he left Egypt. Motivated by faith, he left Egypt behind, being unawed and undismayed by the wrath of the king. For he never flinched, but held staunchly to his purpose and endured steadfastly as one who gazed on him who is invisible. Didn't care what Egypt wanted to do. I didn't care if Egypt said it was okay. Because it's all right. We free. We used to couldn't wear makeup. We used to couldn't wear jewelry. We used to couldn't wear pants. We used to couldn't, you know, uh, wear short dresses or toe out shoes, all of that. And we free. And we done gone from free to being freaks. Something is wrong with that. You need to slide that freedom board right on back over here in the middle somewhere and bring some balance to it. Because that don't mean you can wear anything you want to wear. That means you have the freedom not to be entangled in religion. But by the same token, you got a responsibility to dress in modest apparel with shame face. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. Oh, that onion you got back there. No, put a jacket on if you call to lead praise and worship. You don't walk up there with no pants on and your butt all out. And some of y'all done paid for some extra butt. And then somebody, then somebody got to try to stay focused. Musicians got to try to stay focused and, and not look at your behind. No, put a jacket on. Put a blazer on. You're in ministry. I may get unfriended. The number's gonna go way down after this video. Yep, no more sheets extended. Call it what you want. No more sheets part two and it's all about you. Because people, women of God, we got to stop. We got to stop. It's too far. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Going to black tie fair dinners with half your arm, all of this is out. Dresses all the way down to your butt, the split and your whole back is out down to your crack. Y'all come on. Come on now. Come on. 
Come on. All things are lawful, but not expedient. All things are lawful. But as a woman of God and a believer and a Christian, it's not expedient for you to have your back out all the way down to the crack of your butt. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, my past ain't said nothing because he too shame to look at you. Well, my pastor didn't say nothing to me. He too shame to look at you. And then if the pastor's wife say something to you, you want to call her a hater. Or oh, she just jealous. She just, they, they just, they always pick it on me. Now. No. No. No, she ain't no hater. She love you, but you ain't got sense enough to see it. Because you think you are that. It drives me. And all y'all that's getting on Facebook and doing Facebook Live, stop getting on Facebook and doing Facebook Live, fixing your hair. Fixing your makeup. Hey, don't nobody care what you look like. Just fumbling with your head and talking about God and constantly throwing your hair. Stop all of that. If you're going to be a woman of God and give us the word of God, give us the word of the Lord. We're not on here to watch you look cute. The world is in trouble, I have you noticed. America is shaking and crumbling, or have you noticed? I'm done. I'm done. I'm done, because I can't. I'm not going to shut up. I'm not going to be quiet. No, you searching for something. You got some issues. You got some problems. When you don't mind showing that much of yourself. There's something going on inside of you. That you're trying to get out. You better go and pray and ask God to go down in your belly and get that spirit of rejection. Because that's what it's connected to. When you see a woman that's that loose about her body, you dealing with a spirit of rejection. You searching for something. You want some attention. And that's the wrong way to get it. That's the wrong way to get it. Because what you sell it. What you sell it. I don't get it. I don't get it, y'all. I don't. It's all right to have a little dress out with your little sleeves out if that's what we want to do. But the bottom of the sleeve come all the way down here where we can see the side of your breast. And you at church with that on? Come on now, y'all. Come on now. Come on now. You up there leading praise and worship and we can look straight through your dress like you ain't never heard of a slip? Come on now. Come on now, you playing games. You playing games. And it's not becoming of Christ. That's not a woman of God. That's not a woman who's after God. That's not a woman who's after the heart of God. That's a woman that needs some sex. That's a woman that's looking for a man. And what you're going to find is a monster. Come on now. We're too beautiful for that. Y'all too pretty for that. You don't have nothing to prove. You don't have nothing to prove. Hashtag nothing to prove. I'm sorry. You don't. You don't. And I got to tell you, because I love you. Anybody that know me know I love clothes. And I can put some on. Trust me. And when it's time to look sexy... I know when and I know where and I know how much to show and how much I'm not going to ever show. The new sexy is clothes on, not clothes off.
I don't know what to say no more. My heart is hurt. My heart is hurting. My heart is hurting today because of all of my little sisters that's out here. My heart is hurting. I say the same thing to my nieces. Come to church with something stank on like that. You better not dock in a church door. Talking about it's all right because God know my heart. And he does. And we know your heart now too. So we need to stop that head game. Because that's a head game right there. Somebody ain't never been to church, that's fine. Somebody that just coming to know Christ, that's fine. Somebody that ain't got nothing else to wear and they coming to the Lord, that's fine. But I'm talking about you rusty people that's been in church for four and five years and most of y'all was born and raised in church and you just crossing the line now because you know what? Mother Wallace is dead. Mother Dempsey is dead. All these older people that used to say, come here, baby, you need to put a safety pin in that. Now I'm doing what I want to do. Now I'm grown. That's grown? Oh. So now you grown enough to make a decision. You grown enough now to make a decision to look like a hoe. Very good. Well, I just need to give you a hand clap because you should be real proud of yourself. You should be real proud of yourself. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Grown means I become mature enough to know what is needed and what is desired in a relationship and what God is expecting out of me. And I intend to walk that walk of integrity. And I intend to walk that walk of an example so that people can say to me, there's something about you. There's something about you. What is it about you? And my cleavage ain't all the way down here. I ain't got my chest all split all the way down. I don't have a dress on so short that I can't bend over. With 10 inch heels on. No. No. I picked out a girl in the audience. Beautiful girl. She had braids that was blue. And she had these blue metallic shoes on. Beautiful dress. A dress was over her knees. Very pretty girl. And I said, you know what? For the people that God is calling you to, you're going to reach a lot of people. God gave that girl a word and said, you're getting ready to go into the industry. I don't know nothing about you. But I know God is getting ready to take you into the industry. And you're going to reach people that I would never be able to reach. But that's not for me. That's not for me. And a whole lot of y'all that I see on this page looking like that, that ain't for you. When you coming to the pulpit, there is a difference. The pulpit. I don't know who I'm talking to and there is a difference. There is a difference. Get some nipple covers. If you want them women that get excited, when you get excited, I can see your nipple through your blouse. Get some nipple covers or get you some band-aids and put some band-aids on your nipples and then put your bra on. Put on a camisole. We don't want to look through your blouse on a Sunday morning and see your bra. Oh, that's a new trend now for me to wear a hot pink blouse, a hot pink bra, and a cream color blouse so you can see my bra through my blouse. Y'all done lost your mind. Really? No, that's burlesque. That's what that is. It's called burlesque. It's called peekaboo. You can see it, but you can't. And you come to do what? Worship God? Praise God? Really? Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. What can I say? All right. Then all right. Stop it. Stop it. Really? I can't, y'all. I can't. That's the price that you pay when you've been urged by faith. You are called out 
to be an example. You're not called out to remain the same. I know some of you all may be all right, put a little color in your hair, all right? Some of y'all young people that you know, the millennials, I get it. I get hair color. I get all of that. I just don't get naked, and I never will. I don't care what lineal. I don't care millennial, bilineal, trilineal, collineal. I don't care how many lineals you can put on it. I'm never going to buy naked and whole. Never. Hair color, all right. Three earrings in your ears, all right. Naked, never. God ain't calling no lineal. To look like that and say you still saved. I'm sorry. And I don't care who don't like me today. And this could be my last time on Facebook. And I would just say hasta la vista. I'm out of here, baby. Because I will not. I will not. I will not. Can't do it. Can't do it. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Jumping all across the stage looking like that. With no stockings on. Sweating all down your legs. You look nasty. You look nasty. And it's not ladylike. There's a standard in the White House. There's certain colors they can't even wear in the White House. There's certain length of dresses that women in the White House can't even wear. Hello, somebody. Hello, somebody. Why you ain't never seen Michelle Obama naked? I don't care if it was a, a black tie affair. Hello? Because there's some things that are not allowed as a president's wife. And that's who we are. We are the body of Christ. We're the bride of Christ. There's a standard here. I just read where one of them colleges is stripping some girl of her title or her crown or something. For being inappropriate. Everybody got a standard in the world but the church. And we done took a free for all and we done fell down hard. Hard. No standard. Well, I am one on this page that I am saying everything don't go. Now, I done said it. And I'm in the Bible. I'm in the Bible. I'm not talking about not wearing pants. I'm talking about wearing them so tight that I can see the print of your butt through your, through your pants. I'm not talking about not wearing skirts. I'm saying wearing it so short and so tight that I can see the print of your vagina. No. I'm sorry. The White House has a dress code. The police department has a dress code. The fire department has a dress code. The doctors have a dress code. The lawyers have a dress code. And you know what the thing that really kills me? And I'm going to say this and I'm going. The thing that really kills me is that we have the audacity as Christians to be so self-absorbed and so cocky and so arrogant to look at other religions and say, oh, they believe in Buddha, they going to hell. Oh, they believe in Islam, they going to hell. Oh, you know what? They walk around here, you know, in India, putting them red dots on their head, they going to hell. I'm not here, nobody talk to me. My ear is to the camera. Oh, they walk around there, the, the, all, them, all them Muslim people, they going to hell. All them Hindu people, they going to hell. All them people that's in China and Japan, worshiping Buddha, putting fruit down for Buddha, they going to hell. Well, why is it that they seem to be in the wrong religion, but their religion can teach them to put some clothes on? And we supposed to be in the right one, and we looking like hoes. I just want somebody to tell me that. I just want somebody to just help me understand that. How we're supposed to be in the right one. 
and the Holy Ghost is right, and Jesus is right, and God is right, and you can't come to the Father but by Him. But we the only ones that want to walk the streets naked. We the only ones that forgot to let our lead find our hope so we can be holy. It's gone. You need to let your lead find your hope. So that word hope can be translated into holy. And I'm going to be the one to tell you. And I don't care if you don't like it. We done gone too far. And I'm talking to the pastors. I'm talking to pastors who are preaching and you don't say nothing about that. Because what's wrong with you? That you got a church full of women that's walking around looking like that. Intimidating your wife. Because everybody get a chance to look for free. Something is wrong with that. Something is wrong with that. Something is wrong with that. And then we don't have no more women's department because can't nobody tell us nothing. We get a women's department and they want to tell us, you know what? We need to pull it in. I'm leaving that church because now they're all in the rules and I'm leaving that church because you know what? I just want to be free. You can be free. Free from yourself. Ain't nobody trying to bind you up. They trying to build you up. Oh, well, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know no more. And if y'all say it's all right, then all right. But it ain't all right to me. It ain't all right to me. I was standing out sideways on Facebook taking pictures of your... your your titties are out like this. Who does that? Who does that? Who does that? Who want to see your breast, woman of God? Who want to see your tight dress? Who want to see how small your waist is? We don't care. We need a word from God. Take all of that over there on Instagram. But there ought to be some place that we can find the God in you. There ought to be some place on social media as a woman of God that we can see and trust that God is giving you a word without us having to look at your shape. I'm sick of it. And I ain't nobody. Somebody said, well, who she thinks she is? Nobody. 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 Why don't we see pictures of you feeding the homeless? Why don't we see pictures of you clips in church preaching the gospel? Why don't we see clips of you laying hands on people or teaching a Bible study? Or operating in a mentorship group? Why every picture got to be about you? I'm done. I'm done. Urged on by faith. I realize that I'm in a strange land and I'm not to become a part of this. That there has to be a difference. When people look at me, if I got on jeans, no matter what I have on, they ought to be able to see holy. I don't care what I got on. They ought to be able to say she loved the Lord. I said I'm not talking about people that just came into the church. I'm not talking about people who just came into the church. I'm talking to all of y'all old, rusty, dusty people who your grandmama raised you better than that. Your mama raised you better than that. You are bishop's daughters, pastor's daughters. You know better than that. Now, it's just done gone too far. And I love you. I love you. And the sad thing about it is y'all so anointed. The bad, the bad thing about it is that God has really called you. Many of you that are watching this video, the Lord has a great call of God on your life. But it's a shame that we will never see it. It's a shame that, that, that what God has given you to say to us. 
We can't hear it unless we close our eyes. Because I'm going to put a disclaimer on my conferences. I invite you to my conference. I'm going to tell you, do not come in my conference with a body con dress on. Do not come in my conference with nothing all up on it and put some stockings on. And I don't want to see your body. I want to hear what God has given you. And that's why I dress the way I dress when I preach. Not because I ain't got a clothes. Let me tell you something. My housekeeper tell you, I got so many clothes, they all out in the garage. And I didn't gave away about 15 bags in the last three months. And I still ain't got enough room. And half of them is still here in Georgia in storage. Clothes? Oh, I can do that for you. I can put some clothes on. But you know what? Urged on by faith, I refuse to be called the daughter of Pharaoh. Motivated by faith, I'm leaving Egypt. I left Egypt. And all of Egypt's ways. I left Egypt and its leeks and its onions. 